hoping it's working anyway. Right then, race car stuff. It's uh, took some planning, a lot of planning. Um, it's not really a big deal planning this sort of stuff down to the nitty gritty like we have if you just want to throw it together randomly when you've got chance and not try to get it done in one go. But we wanted it to be rolling and in a position to uh, start basically doing wiring and stuff within a day rather than over the course of a few days. It's, um, it's took a lot of work. So, as you've probably seen, there's a lot of stuff laid out here and this is just literally the chassis stuff. There's um, obviously chassis and brakes. There's only one wheel there because we've got to do some measurements and order the right offset for them. Um, we've not even got any tyres for this car yet uh, other than the wet weather tyres that are going to go on the 8 inch rims that we've got there. But we're going to have some 9s on with some dry weather tyres as well. So till we've done that, and it's dropped down and we've got the camber, the caster, everything we want it. We can't measure up for the, the nines. Maybe we might go tens. I think nines should be fine though. So this is some of the stuff that we've got. If you're wondering why it's all assembled like this, it's not because we've gone mad and forgot to put it in engine block. The reason we've done this is because, you see there, there's a little drill mark on the end of this pulley there's been little bits took out at crank here and there. The flywheel, this one, has got no balancing marks in it because it was perfectly balanced as it was, straight off CNC, which it doesn't always work like that. This is the only one we've had. But what we've done here, we've sent this off for balancing. So this is all rotated on a big jig. And then you take little bits of material out here and there until this is absolutely perfectly in balance. And you do it with the pulley, with the bolts, the, crack, the cam belt pulley, Obviously that's for the oil pump, crank, flywheel, pressure plate. You don't put the friction disc in because that's usually, that'd be floating around in here. You'd not be able to get it to clamp exactly perfectly true. So you'd never balance it with that. These, I don't think they've got any balancing done to them. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea with how heavy these are to balance them individually, but there's springs and it floats about. So whether it can be done or not, we never bother. Um, so yeah this is all balanced the blocks skimmed ready to go the head skim ready to go the valves are some used ones because this is the old city go head before we went even bigger valves and stuff but this head will be absolutely fine for what we're doing so but this is not all the stuff to build the engine There's some bolts and stuff here but this is not everything we've still got all the gaskets and everything to get out but the pistons are not here so that's another day's job but one thing i will note while we've got this here this is the oval port, so CFHD, um, oh, I can't remember all, there's, there's loads anyway, but the oval port engines. This is the standard crank. Now in the Arosa and the Citigo, we've got a PD crank in there, PD 130, PD 150, because it's got bigger counterweights um, and it's just a little bit more stout, but it weighs four kilograms more. So four kilograms rotating at five and a half, six thousand RPM is a lot. So we're going to keep this crank. It might be a bad idea. We might get some silly resonance from engine and we might start breaking things because City Goal sit at five and a half grand on track just screaming it all the time without any problem. So anyway, we're not going too detailed because we've got tons to do. So the crank, the block, standard. We've not even owned the block. We're just going to leave that as it is. And when all the other stuff comes, we'll talk about that anyway. So onto the chassis side of things. Now, we've already had a look at the Bill Stein suspension. That's a club sport kit with the adjustable top mounts. Two-way adjustment for bump and rebound. So we'll go into more depth when we start testing them, what doing what affects the car. Um, oh, there's so much to look at, I don't know even where to start. So I'll start from front and try and work my way back. So these bottom arms here, these are from Verkline, they do some really nice stuff. We just happened to come across them uh, on the internet and decided that we want to use their stuff. So everything is a spherical bearing, so like a rose joint, if you want to call it that. Really hard to move on, there's got a tire up 
holding it together. But anyway, so this is all adjustable, so you can move it in and out and move the caster to get them absolutely perfect. Nice machine bolts holding it all together. Comes with these consoles, so you don't have any. This is where the rubber bush normally is. So and this actually moves the arm. Um, I think it's 20 mil lower, and that's to change the uh, the geometry of the car as well. Because what we thought we were going to do is get extended ball joints like we're going to be for which we'll put a picture up what they look like. But this is actually pretty much a standard size ball joint just in a machined housing. And that's an ball joint which is as stiff as all these when they're brand new. But you can see that's actually, it looks like it, almost like a ball on it's there, but call them uni balls in America or that sort of thing. Um, so yeah. This is to replace the bottom arms, which we saw in the first video, the TT bottom arms. So full adjustable, should be stronger, not the breaking all the time, but the geometry's changed as well and that ball joint should be a little bit stronger. TT dry shafts, we're potentially gonna have to put some spaces, depending on how wide we push this out, some spaces behind here just to push them out because what you've got to make sure is at ride height that your plunge on your dry shaft is somewhere near in the middle so obviously if it goes up it compresses if it comes down it pulls it out you don't want it to be pulling it out because that's how you smash end of that in which the dry shafts that came on this car were all worn on the inside there same on the lay -on as well so you've got to be careful with that um so Verkline do make a subframe, but only for the Mark 7 stuff, not the Mark 5, Mark 6 platform. So they have said they'll make us one that's coming and there'll be a bit more geometry changes on that as well to try and uh, make it handle a little bit better. And the good thing about a tubular subframe, which we'll put a picture up of what that should look like. You've not got all this here, which it's got a few holes in it, but this is what catches all gravel. If you have a crash, when we got this car, it was all full of gravel all, all here. If you, if you have an off, it just absolutely fills here full of gravel. So you don't want to do that. So while we're in the middle, and I'm not going to have to move again, this is a standard dog bone. Vibrotechnics have supplied us some competition mountings. So these are stiffer than the road ones that we normally sell. Press that in there, knock them out of subframe, bolt that into there. And we've got the cam belt side mount there as well and the gearbox side mount, that's over there. So Vibrotechnics, thank you for that. It's, um, it's always an help to get the competition ones will be a lot better. So moving round this way, this is the messy side because this is where all the bolts are. And these are all genuine bolts that we bought. All the bolts have added up to, I think 400 quid for the engine and the chassis. So it's not cheap changing all your nuts and bolts on a, on a car. But when you're building something sort of brand new, it's always worth putting new stuff like that in. We never go mental and put brand new everything, but nuts and bolts, you don't know how many times I've been in that. You don't want a bolt snapping, for the sake of a few hundred quid in a, what's gonna be a ridiculously expensive project. It's not worth it. So these hubs, these are TT items, but they're not, the usual ones that people think, which I can't even, can't even get it to pick it up. This is a TT8S, which is the brand new TT. So these are the newest ones. Apparently, these ones, according to Verkline, are the ones to have. They've got better um, geometry from the factory. So that, along with the arms, should make a decent difference. Um, and we'll go to the brakes while we're here now. So, as you can see, these are some really, really nice calipers from AP Racing. And we've got all this stuff from uh, James at Race Parts. So, if you want to like that, email him. But these calipers are just ridiculously light. They're um, really, really nice. We've made, so this is just 3D printed at the minute. We've made our own brackets to bolt them up and um, they're going to be machined out of aluminium shortly and then 
these bells are the same bells as what's on the A5. We do need to put a spacer behind these to take up the difference in the spigot size compared to the A5, so that's not a big deal. We'll, um, we'll incorporate that into a spacer to space it out a little bit so we get the clearance for the big ball joints and pull it into the correct position. So the bells are custom by us, the bracket's going to be custom by us, discs are from AP, padged brake pads, which these are the RST freeze, I believe, which we've never tried these before, but these are what the TCR cars run. So I thought we'll try them and see which when we get round to the other side, I'll show you how meaty them pads actually are. AP racing bobbin kit, that's to bolt this disc, which is the British touring car disc, which these are fairly cheap to get second hand. They've got like half to the quarter of a mil shaved off them at the most. So they're, um, they're absolutely sound. The last age, I think A5's done loads of track days, loads of miles, and it's still an original disc we put on. Stud and nuts, these are the kits that we supply. We've had no trouble with these whatsoever. Run them on all our cars. Change them every season if we can. We do a lot of on off, on off, on off with the wheels, but if you just leave them on, they'll last a few seasons. Um, so the reason all this is bolted up with a 3D printed bracket and everything, or to test fit the wheels. So this is the wheel of choice. So this is a two forge, I can't remember, is it ZF1 or something like that? I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll, uh, we'll correct me like we normally do on video if I'm wrong. But these are supplied as a blank so we can drill them to whatever, two forge can drill them to whatever we want them to be. They've sent us this as a blank to do the mocking up to make sure that we're happy with the offset. So we'll drill it to five by 100 and then we're gonna machine it down because this wheel as it comes has got a really big chunky bit at the back so i think this is like an et5 or 10 or something like that so it's quite a low offset so it sticks out quite a lot then when people order and we like a we might be wanting i'd say if this is like an et10 we put on an et30 so we've got 20 mil clearance the um they'll just machine that like we probably want 15 mil machine off the back of these 20 mil maybe so they'll just machine the back, drill the fronts, cam sync them for your studs or bolts, and away you go. So that's going to be going back to them. We'll get a set of four of them and then another set, probably another two or three sets, a nine inches for the dry, because we'll run an eight inch in the wet with a Unirail rain spot, and then for the dry, it'll be nine inches with whatever tyres. We decide track day championship's going to be Toyo Triple Eights, trophy, probably Dunlops. Yokohama, whatever we're going to run. So that's that. Onto the anti roll bar. That's just a white line one that came on the car. We're going to try it with this one. I'm not a big fan of running a massive anti roll bar on the front, but I'm also not a big fan of running a really heavy spring rate. And depending on the geometry of this car, I'd sooner take the roll out with the anti roll bar. And then because we're adjustable at the rear, which we'll get to we can put all that back in with the rear setup if we need to. So steering rack, this is the one I talked about before. Sorry, I'll talk about these first. White line have supplied us some adjustable drop links as well, because you want to use the adjustable ones when you're doing the corner weighting, because you just loosen it off, do your corner weights, and then just put a little bit of preload on it. So this steering rack, it's a Caddy BLS one. Genuine TRW, brand new item. The plan was to run this way, a Mercedes steering pump. I've since been talked out of that by a guy that's run quite a few of these cars for a long time in the VW Cup and stuff like that. So we're going to keep that as a backup if we have any trouble with the electronic rack, but we'll see. Um, these are just some, I think these are Tyrell Sport. These are for the subframe, these go in that bit there in the hole there, just to make the hole opening a little bit smaller to stop the walk that you can get on the subframe if you're hitting curb and stuff like that. These are what Steph had on his shelf off a car that he stripped. And of course we're only running this temporarily, pinched them off him and just said, that's just so we don't have any uh, weird stuff happening during testing. Um, 
new trap rods and trap rod ends, they're all genuine articles from VW. So the difference in price from these to non-genuine, I think it was like two or three quid each, so it weren't worth it. Just buy genuine. The last hundreds of thousands of miles on standard cars, so they'll be fine for our racing. Um, new steering rack bush as well. You can't get that from Powerflex. I have requested that they do one for us, so we'll see. Pinch bolt for the steering rack. Everybody always forgets that when they're upgrading the car. So these brake pads, these are the radical ones. No seals whatsoever, just stainless steel pistons. Um, one bleed nipple, so you can run these trailing or leading, and you just literally bleed it from that one, which will be a ton better than what we've got at the minute. But the good thing about this, you can get two options. You can get a big, a wide pad or a narrower pad. We've gone for the wider pad option, which means it's a bit more critical. But these are 24, 25 mil thick pad, and they're only 10 or 15 percent dearer than the 18 mil thick pads. So you get a lot more for your money. So as long as we're not destroying them where they're dropping to bits before they're worn out, we should get a decent amount of life out of these. They're not cheap, these calipers, and at one point they were ridiculously expensive until AP changed either Mecham or whatever, and just made them more readily available. These are the same as what the TCR cars run, I believe, as well, same with them pads. So we're running a little bit different geometry disc just because they're a bit cheaper for us to get, a bit more manageable throughout season and um, so yeah we're gonna have no shortage of braking at least on the front anyway so I think over then the bell that's how the bell on the rotor is when it's not bolted together with the bobbins that's where the bobbins sit but we've looked at them before so I'm not going to too much detail um, yeah new wheel bearings I didn't say out about them so we're not going to run these crusty old things we're going to put new wheel bearings in there they're not cheap 50 quid a piece or something like that, but put them in, we're not going to have any problems. The dry shafts will probably just, they look fairly good, we might just squirt a bit of grease in them and see how we get on. These are just spare pistons for the calipers in case we have any problems, we always like to have spares or everything, just one caliper's worth, six pot, some little fittings. These are quite interesting, I'm not going to try and demonstrate how they work here because <clears throat> I had a good way earlier and uh, a bit annoying, I'm probably embarrassed myself. But these are dry break, dry bleed fittings. So they'll replace the bleed nipples. And instead of having to crack it off, pump the brakes, turn it up, crack it off, pump the brakes. Literally, you just shove this little adapter on onto the end here. That's like a dust cap. Take the dust cap off, slot this adapter on, turn it on, and just pump away. It's got a check valve inside here, and that'll just go to the pipe into a bottle and there's literally no on, off, on, off, none of that stuff. Just literally pump away and your brakes, are, your, your brakes are bled. So that's one thing as well as the ABS that's causes problem on the Abifa. We're all forever bleeding the brakes. Not so much when we put the six pots on, but before with the Porsche four pots, fresh fluid were always a big deal. So with this, we'll just take the cap off, bang, pump, 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 done, ready to go. So see how that works. So, another interesting thing that we've got is the shifter. This is from TR Motoring in the Netherlands. And as usual, I didn't want to wait two or three weeks for a custom med one. So I just said, what have you got that you can send out to me immediately? And this is the one that they've got. So pull up, that's to block reverse, so you can't go over there and end up in reverse. So. That's what that's for. I don't know why it's got a bit of bubble wrap still attached to it, but that's going to be nice. Mounted on top of the tunnel, so it should be fairly close to the steering wheel, but let's see. Um, and they've sent us some motorsport cables as well, because these have got all the proper ball joints, which these are more industrial than automotive stuff like boats and stuff like that, it was this kind of thing. But there's going to be no plastic in the linkage and stuff like that, so there's nothing to melt, nothing to cause any problems. Just as long as these don't get near the exhaust, it should be fine. So thanks to those guys for sending them. We'll put a link to their Facebook in there. Um, 
and we will be listing them on website as well so we'll put a link to that but these will work for most cars so moving more rearward we've got some more Verkline stuff so these are the rear camber arms really nice piece of machining anodized aluminium nice big ball joint in the end which another thing about these no, that's still there another good thing about these all the arms all the ball joints they're all this size m18 so we don't need to carry tons of spares if we have any problems with these we'll just change one hopefully they're not all crap because we'll be changing changing all of them but they should be good um, all the new nuts and bolts and everything to hold everything together we still use that that's the existing one this one i think yeah one ko but it's from that mark seven rear axle that we're on this keep that that bolts up to the body this is a non-genuine febby rear arm brand new but it's also got another spherical bearing ball joint whatever you want to call it in there as well same on the bottom arm so this is a this is a Lem Forder one, They're just a hanging in there. But Verkline make these little inserts with another spherical bearing in there. That that goes into the hub end, so that goes in like that'll be in there, but in the hub. And then at the other end, we've got another one to press into this bottom arm here as well. So that should uh, should work out pretty good. But we'll see. So then. That's the camber arm, the toe link. We've got an adjustable one of them as well. So usually these have all got these silly camber, wherever they've gone, these, these silly camber adjustable um, bits at the bottom. I don't like these. We've only kept it for this one because there's no adjustment in that one. If we want to just get a fine tweak on it, we can. But for the other arms, we're going to lock that off and then just do all the adjustment in these rose joints. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and before we disappear outside, this subframe, free CO, that's a Passat number. So it's, um, I think it's only two or three kilograms lighter than the steel one, but anyway, we wanted to, uh, wanted to do it properly. And that also allowed us to take, that also allowed us to take these um, bushes out and put these nice machined, subframe spaces in subframe bushes and these have only got a small hole that the bolt only just fits in so it's not going to um, it's not going to cause any trouble dan's just turned up trying to ruin 20 minutes of video in his honda get your honda out of here dan and um, so we'll get around here danny's got wrong way rear calipers not going to go for anything fancy at the rear these are just some off the shelf trw which is a company that originally makes these for volkswagen the um, standard refurbished calipers new calipers whatever you want to call them these are only going to be 286 mil so like a golf r32 runs a 310 mil vented we only want these we don't want any bigger than this we've already had to change the rear bias set up in the pedal box to try and get as much braking away from the rear as we can so there's no point taking all the bias away with master cylinders and putting it all back in with big discs it would be nice to have a vented disc about this size just so it don't get hot and then you because what you've got is your front pads take a bit of a while to get get up your rear ones come up quicker because they've got no vents in them and uh, the way you go but anyway it is what it is we'll um, we'll see what we can do so rear spring, spring adjusters are there. Verkline make these nice adjustable rear drop links as well. And these, I think they've had numbers, they've got the numbers on and they've had some of it took off them, but these are uh, Awara um, rose joints, I think, which is quite a good brand. Um, the set akmotorsport.net, which I believe is Verkline. So adjustable for rear again. And then this anti-roll, anti-roll back to subframe bolts. This is um, an anti-roll bar that Steph had in off a of Mark II lay under the brock. 
I believe it's an H&R one, well, I'm not too sure, it's old and crusty, but it's all, so it's like half weight in a normal anti-roll bar. So we just said, we've not got one. This subframe just come with a standard piddly thing and um, the car didn't come with uh, anything fancy. So we'll try that one, but we'll more than likely be getting white line to do us something a bit more upgraded. Um, but we'll see how that works out. I think this subframe's wrong way around as well. It probably should be that way around, but anyway. Um, rear rubs, I've not really mentioned them other than we're gonna put that bushing into there. These are Audi TT rear rubs, which the same as um, most stuff really. There's some golfs and like the lower model stuff have uh, steel ones, but the aluminium ones are a bit lighter and a bit better geometry. And we'll put a new wheel bearing, a new wheel bearing in there as well. So I think, have we missed anything, Danny? I'm not too sure. Um, Ge gearbox, yes. So that's the chassis stuff sorted. The gearbox, the reason I forgot, because I'm using it as a doorstop, because it's absolutely red hot today. But this gearbox is from um, a 140 horsepower um, Mark VI Golf. And it's, it turns out that this gearbox ratio that we decided before we even bought this car, we said these are the ratios that we probably want to run. These ones are the one that, um, the donor car that we've ended up buying for the wiring and stuff, they're the same. So it's worked out all right, really, because we ended up with a second gearbox without having to buy another one. So because we're running the TR motor and shifter, we've got to run a steel uh, real air lever so we can chop this off and drill it. So this plastic one's got to go. But that, literally, I'll buy, I'll buy some new bushes. I'll buy a new uh, little uh, slider, and then we'll put that in there drill, do whatever we need to do, and away we go. So this gearbox, it's not going to remain standard. We're going to be putting a 3J diff in it, some strengthening mods, do the fork work and all that stuff, but that'll be a separate video, same as the engine. When we start doing that, we'll get it all laid out, show people what we're doing to it, but we're not running any fancy sequential gearboxes, stuff like that, but we are building this car, although we've got the fancy shifter and a manual gearbox here, when we do the wiring for the car and throughout the full process of how we're tuning it and what we're going to do, the ultimate goal is eventually to put a DSG in this and just see how much faster it is. It's like 30 or 40 kilograms heavier. Um, so we're going to have to take it out somewhere. So we'll not look at Dan's engine, no matter how much he wants us to look at his silly K20 Honda, we're not going to look at it. <laughs> so some other little bits that we've got not related to the chassis but these are going to be getting put in pretty shortly OMP steering wheel same as the Abifa this ended up it's not a brand new one it ended up coming out of Danny's M3 because he didn't um, he didn't like the deep dish so anyway we bought him a flat one and he gave us that one the long acre curved mirror Absolutely vital if you ask me. Every car we've got runs them. You can see everything all around you without checking every mirror, which is always good. CarTech battery isolator kit, which all that does is interrupt the earth signal to your battery for this little thing here. But anyway, it's a little. Get it out now. I'm halfway there. I might as well. So that bolts to your chassis and then you put your battery negative to there and you put a positive to that and then that goes to your ECU. And basically, in the car, you press that and it'll kill it, press it again and it resets. Outside the car, if your car's on fire, somebody can press that and turn it off. So this is MSA compliant, better than them uh, cables and stuff like that because it's very hard on a modern car to make it kill everything. Whereas that, very easy. They're not cheap, but they're worth the money. And it simplifies everything so while we're doing the wiring we'll put that in odyssey battery these have got no um acid inside them it's going to leak all over they're like a dry matting or whatever. It's, it's wet but it's it don't leak out if you bust it like a normal battery um my lapse transponder which you've got to have that if you're racing that goes at front of the car and 
trips every time you go past and they can keep an eye on you while you're going around circuit and stuff like that. So we've not even opened that yet, but that needs to be getting wired up at the same time as all this stuff. Then we've got the Autotel digital radio. So this is, a, is this an analog one? I can't bloody remember. Scott saw it all out, but anyway, this is all going to get wired in. Button on the steering wheel to press it so I can shout when it all goes wrong. The worst thing Scott's ever bought. And then these come out of the black Abifa that we, we've nicked these to print to the Golf. Nacaduct, that's to let air in, that's to let air out. So that's going to be aiming at the driver's neck or whatever to keep you cool. And I don't know where this turned up from, but we've got a fancy pedal. Don't know if we need it or not. And this is the ECU that we're going to run. So this is the same ECU that the City Go runs, but we're not going to be running the City Go Power. So I think that concludes this video. I've been rambling on for far too long. It's took ages just to lay this stuff out to make sure we've got it all. There's a couple of little nuts and bolts that I've had to order again today, but this is pretty much everything for the chassis to get it all together. Do these little bits, we'll throw one of the seats in, and once we've done the engine and gearbox, it's, it's, ready, it's ready to go. I'm making it sound easier than it is, but it's a lot of work, but now it's laid out where it is, at least the, the lads, when we print together, are not having to do it while they should be working. So. If you're liking what this is going to turn into, subscribe, share the video and uh, comment if there's anything else that you want us to go into a bit more detail. I try and reply to most people. I don't reply to people abusing me personally, unless I can take my car of them as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching.